So I have gotten so many questions about our malaria root rot. And um, I think that's because just overnight it will appear in someone's yard, this huge cluster of mushrooms um, and, you know, caused by fungi in the genus Armillaria, thus Armillaria root rot. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about Armillaria root rot. So um, these huge clusters of mushrooms that fruit at the base of your trees, there are different mushrooms that can do this, but in might be honey mushrooms, which are the cause of our malaria root rot. And so in this edition of What's Bugging My Tree, we're going to talk a little bit about it, uh, what it does, and some potential lookalikes as well, because it's not the only thing that can fruit out of the base of your tree. Um, so what is our malaria root rot? It refers to a disease caused by several different fungi in the genus Armillaria, um, close relatives to each other, as well as some other genera. So why you might notice this when the fungus is producing mushrooms, which are the fruiting body of a fungus, um, that's for our malaria is going to happen late summer, early fall. The rest of the year, the fungus that is causing this lives and grows and feeds off of wood. So this could be dead wood logs and dead stumps in your woods, um, but it can also cause disease in trees, especially those that are already stressed. And here you can see a picture of a um, the base of a tree that's not doing so well, pretty dead, and it's got a lot of wood decay there. You can see the mushrooms kind of fruiting out of it. What you can't really see is that in that wood, you've got this bigger fungal body that's eating and, and breaking down that wood and feeding off of it. Um, so that is a key distinction. Armillary rot is referring to the disease that's caused by these fungi in the armillaria group, but they go by different names. You might hear the mushrooms called honey mushrooms, or you might hear this damage called shoestring root rot. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and why that is. So this disease impacts the roots and bases of trees. Um, it'll the fungus will break down the wood, either living or dead. And of course, when it's a living tree, we call it a disease. If it's just breaking down some dead wood, that's fine. That's just being nature's recyclers. Um, but when it's feeding on those living trees, it can, of course, kill the roots of trees, reducing their ability to uptake water and nutrients. But it can also feed on the wood. And that can result in structural issues for the tree, since it's more likely to fail if it's got a lot of decay at the base of the tree. And you can see some pictures of that right here. With the white fluffy stuff that you're seeing, that's going to be the fungus that's growing in there that's breaking down that wood. And that's going to potentially cause more structural issues for that tree. Now, the, this kind of armillary root rot can happen on a really broad range of trees many different species can be impacted. And there are actually many different species of fungi that cause this kind of damage and they can prefer different tree species. They might be common in different parts of the country or world. Um, so even though people tend to lump these all together, our malaria root rot, really we're talking about a lot of different things going on. Um, so what to look for, the fungi that cause our malaria root rot typically are hidden under the soil beneath the bark of trees um, in the roots of trees. But every year in the late summer, early fall, you can see these fungi produce mushrooms. And this is a picture of one of those clusters, um, a lot of those mushrooms tightly packed together. Um, I've received a lot of photos already this fall that kind of look like this, um, someone's yard with lots of little clusters of mushrooms. And I love this picture that has the stump of the dead tree. And then it has these little clusters throughout the yard. And I think this is great because it shows us what's happening here. It's not that these mushrooms are really growing in the lawn, they are, but what they are really growing on are the roots of this dead tree. So there are buried roots in here and these uh, mushrooms are fruiting out of those because the fungus that produces them is living in that wood. It's breaking down that wood. Um, so when you see these mushrooms popping up in your yard, what it tells you is that there's some 
wood somewhere hidden in there that that fungus is living on. And in this case, with this big stump left there, lots of roots left there, they're likely to live for many years fruiting out of um, that dead wood. And they produce these huge clumps of mushrooms that can seem like they appear overnight. So really surprising for folks. Um, since there are actually several different species that are lumped together as causing Amrillaria root rot, these mushrooms can look different. For example, these honey mushrooms, Armillaria melii, have a ring around their stem. And this is one of the common species that you might see in Kentucky. And by ring, what do I mean? Well, I mean that if you look at the stem of these mushrooms, you've got this little ring right here around that stem. Um, versus another very common species that's been popping up, referred to as the ringless honey mushrooms, are prolific this year, um, especially on the roots of pen oaks and silver maples. But you see, they don't have that little ring, and thus the name, the ringless honey mushrooms. These are two, just two of the more common species in our area, but depending on where you are and where you're located, there might be totally different species. Um, these tend to emerge in large clusters on the base of trees or roots or in buried wood. But these mushrooms aren't the only signs of the fungus that's infecting these trees. Other things you might see, um, if you're peeling back the bark or along the roots of the trees, you might see these white mats of fungal mycelium. These are called mycelial fans here under that bark of the diseased tree. That's pretty distinctive of our malaria, although you can find kind of white mycelial growth. Lots of fungi produce that, um, but these mycelial fans um, are one of the things to look for. Another thing that you might notice, and uh, this is how they get the name shoestring root rot, is that our malaria produce these hardened thread-like mycelial structures. And the mycelium is the vegetative structure of the fungus. If the mushroom is the fruiting body, the mycelium is what it's doing the rest of the time. And that white fluffy stuff in the mycelia fannings is mycelium, but our malaria produce these other weird structures. There's hardened black or brown uh, you know, shoestring-like structures. And that's going to be really different from other things and is something to look for with our malaria root rot. And here's just me holding some. You can see what that looks like in my hand, you know, almost string-like or thread-like. So another thing to look for would be symptoms and the canopy of the tree. Things like thinning and dieback in the branches. Um, many times, you know, you're not gonna see underground and what's going on there unless you happen to catch the mushrooms, but you might see the thinning in the canopy and the issues there that can tell you, oh, you have a fungal problem with the roots or some root issue. It's not gonna tell you what that issue is, but it could tell you that there's something going on below ground. And then, of course, sometimes this might result in tree failure or even death um, in those landscape trees. And while this picture is a really um, you know, severe example of that, a lot of times in our area in Kentucky, our malaria root rot is more of a gradual issue that, that stresses trees or impacts stress trees. Now, it's worth noting that our malaria root rot expresses differently in different places and on different species, in part because there are different species of our malaria, some are more aggressive than others, and in part because our forests are different. You know, they're more diverse than they are in other parts of the country. So in this picture, you can see uh, ponderosa pine in the western U.S., where our malaria has kind of taken out a whole patch of otherwise healthy trees, and it's going to move out from there. So really a more serious issue that can drive decline. And if you've ever seen this U-Haul truck that describes the humongous fungus, the biggest living organism in the world, uh, that's also an armillaria, uh, which is kind of exciting. This is one individual colony in a forest in Michigan that's considered you know, the biggest living organism. Uh, scientists have since dated it to maybe around 2,500 years old. And it's sized to be maybe 400 tons. But a note, if you go visit this fungus, don't expect to see giant mushrooms. While the below ground vegetative part of the fungus is huge, the mushrooms 
they're just normal sized. Uh, so you're not going to be as impressed. But uh, another fun fact about uh, this particular species, Armillaria gallica, is that the mycelium sometimes will bioluminesce or glow in the dark, which is very cool. And some fungi do that. Um, but here in Kentucky, Armillaria is typically only an issue for trees that are already stressed or maybe those that it's an added stressor that contributes to tree decline over time. Um, again, maybe this has to do with our different species of armillaria, our different climate, um, the high overall diversity of our stands, which prevents spread as easily from one tree to the next. But in the woodland setting is typically not gonna be something that's gonna cause widespread tree death. In the landscape setting, you might see more of that. Um, there are a lot of different stressors that impact those trees. Now, what are some other similar diseases that are out there that impact tree roots, base of trees? Um, this is oak bracket fungus. It is um, something that causes uh, damage to the base of the tree and roots very common on stressed urban trees. Um, Ganoderma fungi, there are lots of them. And again, they'll cause rot of the roots of the base of the tree, um, can not only impact the tree's health and vigor, but cause structural issues. And those are some things that functionally can cause disease in the same place as armillary root rot. But there are also some mushrooms that are popping up this time of year that might look kind of similar that I wanna point out. One of those are, is the jack-o'-lantern fungus. Um, and you can see why it's called jack-o'-lantern. It's this bright orange color, but it also tends to form these large clusters on the stumps or on buried roots of hardwoods, especially oaks. Um, and while it is beautiful and it's popping up right now, good thing to know because it is poisonous and can make you very sick if you happen to eat it. So don't mix this one up. Um, another one that kind of pops up and can look kind of similar are Gallorhina species. Um, again, these are going to be popping up, feeding on dead logs, um, feeding on that wood. Neither it nor the jack-o'-lanterns really cause disease in the same way that Armillaria does. But another one that's good to know because it's abundant, uh, common, and it's another one that's poisonous. This is a deadly poisonous mushroom. Uh, you want to make sure that you are not uh, confusing it for anything else. But another thing that pops up this time of year on wood. So from a management perspective, you know, there's no cure for armillaria root rot, um, and it's all over our environment. You will see it on dead logs everywhere in the woods. You can't take a walk and not see signs of armillaria. However, it's important to note that this is really only a major issue for stressed and damaged trees. So promoting the health of trees will minimize potential issues. Um, you really wanna prevent any wounding, especially to the roots and base of a tree. Not only could armillaria get in there, but so could lots of other fungi. And because armillaria is typically a problem for stressed trees, minimize tree stress and you're unlikely to have major issues with armillaria in our area. Um, you know, there's no treatment for infected trees, but promoting the health of trees can improve their ability to fight back um, for armillaria and a slew of other things. But if you're maybe planted an urban tree and it has this and it's declining and dying, you might not want to plant the exact same species in the same spot. You might want to select some species that are slightly more resistant to armillaria. Um, otherwise, you know, that's going to stay present in the soil and in those roots, and it might infect whatever you plant there next. So consider that um, if you're talking about a landscape tree. So with that, I'm going to wrap up what's bugging my tree and talking a little bit about armillaria root rot. Um, while we're talking about the disease that's caused by armillaria today, you know, it's fall, it's official, and there are fungi popping up everywhere. Uh, so I wish you all some happy mushroom hunting. Hopefully you're not seeing this one, but lots of other great things.